Hey folks, how you doing? Papa Joe here. This is our night three of the Christmas challenge. <coughs> which will be chapter three. If you would, join me in opening prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for putting this challenge upon us. We thank you for the fellowship that it brings amongst us. We thank you for the fellowship it brings between us and your son, Jesus. Lord, please be with us. Help us to understand this story of your son, Jesus, and, and the true meaning to Christmas, and the true meaning to what he means to us, and how he plays a part in our life. Lord, we're just so thankful for you. These things we pray in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And all God's people said? All right. Chapter 3. Now, in the first two chapters, that was the story of Jesus, uh, the good Lord coming down to Mary and Joseph and all that, Jesus being born. Chapter 2 was the actual birth of him and brought us up to his age 12 plus. So chapter 3, we're going to start on John the Baptist. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Potus Platt was governor of Judai. He ran trench. Boy, I hate these names they've gotten here. I can't pronounce them, so just chuckle and go on with it. Uh, of Galilee, his brother Philip, Tetrach of Itera, and another funny name, and another funny name of Abilene. I know Abilene. During the high priesthood of Annas, and Capitus, the word of God, came to John, son of Zechariah, in the desert. He went into all the country around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, a voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him, every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill made low. The crooked road shall become straight. The rough way smooth. And all mankind will see God's salvation. John said to the crowds coming out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abram as our father, for I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for, for Abram, Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. What should we do then, the crowd asked. John answered, The man with two tonics? should share with him who has none. And the one who has food should do the same. Tax collectors also came to be baptized. Teacher, they asked, what should we do? Don't collect any more than you are required to, he told them. Then some soldiers asked him, and what should we do? He replied, don't extort money and don't accuse people falsely. Be content with your pay. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Christ. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one more powerful than, than I will come. The thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His one walking fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. He will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And with many other words, John exhorted the people and preached the good news to them. But when John rebuked Herod the Tetris because of Hedrus, his brother's wife, and all the other evil things he had done, Herod added this to them all. He locked John up in prison. 
when all the people were baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in a bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Now Jesus himself was about 30 years old when he began his ministry. He was the son, so it was thought of Joseph. The son of Heli, and it goes down his whole list right here. And I ain't going to try to pronounce all them names. If you want to, it's chapter 3 of Luke and starting at verse 23. Uh, and it continues to the end. I'm sorry, I ain't going to try to read all them names, but it gives a rust rundown of the history of uh, Jesus' birth. Or should I say Joseph's birth. So uh, that's it for chapter 3 tonight. Sorry I cut it short on reading all them fancy names. But all I would do is mispronounce them, mislead you, and give you something to chuckle about. But remember, I'm not a preacher. I'm just somebody that loves Jesus. And I'm taking this Christmas challenge. I hope y'all are taking it with me. So, please read it yourselves. Ain't nothing like reading the Word. The truth comes from reading. That's what he tells us. You would join me in a closing prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word tonight. For this chapter, Lord, forgive me for not being able to read the whole chapter to your followers, to your to, to the brothers and sisters, Lord. You know I get tongue-tied and I can't pronounce some of them names, Lord. And please help them all to understand that the, the names are not important. What is important is what your son did for us. You sent him down here for us, for this season, for this time of year. And what is important is that we learn about the life of your son and how his time here on earth was and, and how he has paid for us, for, for our sins. Be with each and every one of us, Lord, and help us to understand. You're an awesome God and we sure love you for it. Lord, please help us to continue with this challenge and to understand what we're reading. These things we ask in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, what I want to remind you before I get off of here is uh, people often ask if the Old Testament uh, is not what we're really going by, we're going by the New Testament now, what good is the Old Testament? Well, the Old Testament is, to me, is if you don't know your past, how can you live your future? All right? And if you read that past, if you study the Old Testament, you will find out that throughout the years, throughout different prophecies and whatnot, God was setting it up for Jesus. Uh he tried to do everything he could to have man, uh, uh, what word am I looking for? To pay for his own sins with all the different sacrifices and all this. And none of it was working. Basically, to me, man was learning how to manipulate the laws, that, the covenants that had been set between man and God. And this was not working out. So... Uh, God understood that he was going to have to make a real sacrificial lamb. Thus far, he started preparing the way, way back in the Old Testament, for Jesus to come to earth. And that's why you hear them referring back to the Old Testament, back to Isaiah and all these other people. It will keep going back to them to show you where uh, God had put it down that this is going to happen and this is going to happen and this now, he didn't just come right out and say that uh, Abraham is going to have a great, 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 great grandchild that will be Jesus. You know, he didn't say that. But he did say that out of Abraham, a whole lot of stuff is going to happen out of his name, out of his fold. So that's why we have the Old Testament. And if you want to get into an in-depth uh, search of the Old Testament, uh, go ahead and start 
doing a research of what old prophecies and what old verses in the Old Testament will lead up to Jesus and what he did and who he was and what happened and what he does for us. With that, I appreciate y'all coming in tonight. Uh, tomorrow night, we're on chapter four, the temptation of Jesus. That gets interesting. That's when Jesus really starts talking to us. And uh, let's enjoy it together. Appreciate y'all being here. Y'all remember, good Lord love you. So do I. Good night now.